G'day fellow trekkers. Well, here we are up in um, northern Queensland. So after a nice uh, relaxing flight at 7.40 a.m. this morning, we left Melbourne, uh, flying on Jetstar uh, up to Prosperine Airport. I think that's how, Prosperine, Prosperine Airport. I think that's how it's called. And uh, jumped in a little car and um, headed up um, towards uh, Bowen. We're gonna be staying up here at uh, Early Beach and then the Whit Sundays for two or three days. Going to take a little bit of a look around, uh, see what's out there for us, and uh, going to take you on a bit of a journey with us. Anyway, first stop here we are today. Uh, this is um, a little sort of, I guess, feature. Uh, Australia has all these crazy things called uh, the big, the big prawn, the big banana, the big mango, and here we are at the big mango. Uh, I'll spin myself around. Oh my god, you really can't see, can you? So, there, have a look. That is the big mango. And uh, this is what we've come to see. Yeah, so this is what we came for. Mango sorbet. So we visited the big mango. Not only to get this, obviously the big mango is a uh, tourist attraction, but mango sorbet is supposed to be pretty good. Unsweetened, well naturally sweet I should say, so just the natural sugars that are in the mango. Kensington pollard mangoes, which are probably one of the more popularly grown mangoes within Australia. So, it's just a bit hard, let's get her in. Cold, very cold. Mm. Good break for this weather. 31 degrees out here. Mm. Sweet. Very good. Egg. Very nice. Fresh mango. Turn into a sorbet. Delicious. One more. Mm -mm. Wonderful. If you're up this way, you've got to stop here and give this a go. So we're here at Flagstaff Hill uh, in Bowen. This sort of like overlooks uh, the Whit Sundays. As you can see, this is what you can see behind me is looking to the south. And uh, that's um, down south towards the uh, Whit Sunday coast and uh, the Whit Sunday Islands. So a very beautiful part of the world. It is wet season. Um, we're pretty lucky today at the moment. We've got some pretty clear skies, but you can see that behind me that there is a little bit of a cloud bank starting to build up. Uh, we might get some showers and some thunderstorms later on today. Below me is the sleepy seaside town of Bowen. Uh, it's a traditionally a uh, fishing town and um, is being renowned for some of its seafood up this way. Lovely little spot to stop, very beautiful. From here we're going to drive through the town and then uh, go and take a look at Horseshoe Bay. And if we're feeling energetic enough in the temperature, we're going to climb up and have a look out over the bay. So uh, here we are at uh, Horseshoe Bay. Um, this has been made famous by the granite outcroppings that you can see on either side of the bay which gives it its uh, horseshoe shape. There's a little bit of a breeze, offshore breeze blowing to us, sorry, onshore breeze blowing today. And um, of course that's chopped the sea up just a little bit, but it would normally be a very, uh, I guess, calm and flat sort of water. Here we are, this is the intersection of uh, Murray Bay and Rose Bay and we're going to um, 
make our way down to Murray Bay to see if we can get up over the outcrop that looks out over Horseshoe Bay, see if we can get a little bit of an elevated photograph. We're going to give that a go, so um, it's just a short walk down, a couple of minutes, and then uh, hopefully if we get a bit of luck, we're going to be able to, we're going to, be able to scramble up, we're going to be able to scramble up the other side and um, have a wee look. So as you can see, grade four track, very rough, many obstacles, limited signage. So experienced bushwalkers like us, no problem. So let's see how we go. Hopefully we won't be falling down, breaking any parts of our bodies today. Would be a good start. Come around the corner, heading towards Horseshoe Bay. It's a nice little, little bit of a bay here. Trees, palms, hangs off the back of this property. I don't know what it is, but I don't know if it's a private beach, but this is the way the walking track goes. This is, oh, this is actually Murray Bay. So there you go. It's a nice little bay, very pretty. Again, all this beautiful granite outcrop they have here. Alright, let's keep pushing on. So, uh, one kilometre walk to Horseshoe Bay and it's up the top of that peak up there somewhere to look down over it. So, we left Bowen and uh, driving back to Early Beach where we're going to be staying and um, we thought that we would uh, just stop at this little place called Hideaway Bay um, it's supposed to be a little bit of a well-kept secret up in this part of the world even though it's well signposted but uh, anyway let's go down here and have a quick look We are in the beautiful Witch Sundays, North Queensland, at a little beach called Hideaway Bay. As you can see, there's no one here. We've basically got almost as far as the eye can see, we've basically got the beach to ourselves. Look at the water, it's absolutely stunning. That turquoise and greens, amazing. It's not sure if there's a lookout spot that we can get to so I can look down on the bay a bit, but I'm thinking over there somewhere. I don't possibly really want to go. But this is just a fantastic part of the world. Tropical North East Queensland. So here we are, early morning, um, 
just getting ready to go out on the Thundercat out there. That's going to be our boat, a couple of boats going out, and we're going to be heading out to the Whitsunday Islands, uh, going out to Whitehaven Beach, and uh, a couple of others, do a little bit of snorkeling um, and travelling around. I'm oh, looking forward to this, it should be a good fun. The weather today is uh, absolutely spectacular, as you can see and uh, is expected to stay that way all day with more sunshine this afternoon. So um, we'll uh, do some more videoing when we're on our way. So here we go. We managed to get a seat up the front of the boat so we can get splashed on, roller coaster ride, bumped off. And now we're heading off out to the, uh, I think we're going to Whitehaven Beach first. I think that's what they said. So, High tide's at noon, so we're going to go to the spots either side of high tide. So, heading off outside of the harbour now. Oh, yeah. That's one of our tour guides, JJ. She's going to be looking after us today. How are you? Yeah, how are you? Good, don't fall on the hole. This is where the naughty people hide, yeah? Oh, is it? <laughs> Okay, I doubt if you're going to be able to hear me, but we're off now. We've got some music going. We've got some motors going. We've got some boats going. We're out of here. Woo! Take a ride.
sands and uh, these are sand patterns caused under the water um, by the moving tide so apparently about 9,000 Instagram photos a day are taken of that so we'll check that out. Breathtaking views are just around the bend, as they say. So, anyway, we're going to walk up here, follow the steps, follow the group, and uh, we'll take some photos and some video when we get up the top. Okay, so here we are at uh, Whitehaven Bay, and uh, this is the lookout. You can see the people all having a little bit of a play in the water down there. White sand, 98% silica, so it is very, very fine. And uh, one of the purest forms of uh, sand you can get. As you can see, the swirling sands, so the tides create these swirling patterns in the water. And um, yeah, that's basically what you come up to look out to see. So, time to take a few photographs. After leaving the lookout, we now uh, made our way through the forest and we're going to come out onto the white sands of Whitehaven Beach. Oh, that's only sand is warm in this sun. Not a lot of shade here for us. Have to find a shady tree somewhere to sort of like hibernate at. Heading over towards some sandy, sandy patches. We'll walk around the corner. We'll have a little, have a little look at what you saw from the top. What it looks like from down the bottom. There it is. Superb. It is Whitehaven Beach. So here we are, out just walking around looking for wildlife, watching the other people looking for wildlife as well, taking photos of trees and uh, avoiding stingers. Okay. So you can see some champagne bubbles coming up from the sand where my toes are. That's due to the sand being so soft and the air being trapped underneath it. How cool. I don't know if you can see this very well on video, but I'm chasing him. There's a little baby ray. He's trying to hide under the sand now. You can see him there. Off he goes. 
Uh, that's a cow tail ray. A cow tail ray. Yeah. And he's coming straight at my feet. And here he is. And I assume that I'm getting this on video because I can't see my screen to save my life at the moment. <laughs> So uh, day three um, up on the Whit Sundays. Today we're just going to uh, spend some time on the mainland. We're going to head off to Cedar Creek Falls now. Um, it's about a 30 minute drive from Early Beach where we are. And uh, yeah, you can drive right up to the falls, a short walk from the car park. Um, there's a swimming hole there. And hopefully, if we're lucky, we'll get to see some turtles. So um, we'll see you there. Okay, so here we are at uh, the entrance to Cedar Creek Falls. It's only a really, really short walk. We've just got to walk down there and we'll get to the swimming hole just down the bottom there. So um, if you want to follow me, come along. There's no uh, diving from the falls. I've done this in the falls. Hey, a little bit of water. It's been a while since I had some rain, but it's still going. Normally in the middle of uh, web season this would be 
absolutely gushing, but uh, considering it, we're at the tail end of uh, summer and the tail end of the wet season, we've only got really a little bit of water just sort of trickling off the top of the balls down into this water hole here. Um, it is swimmable and uh, a lot of people do come swimming in here. Uh, occasionally you'll see some turtles and things like that, so we'll keep a close eye out around those small rocks. Okay, we're back in the car now. Uh, short stop at um, the Cedar Creek Falls. Uh, didn't wow me at all. Um, I guess probably because the water flow was just a little bit sort of low uh, compared to what I was hoping for. A few people jumped in and took a dip. Um, I thought about it, but it's still early in the morning, so we didn't really want to drive around for the rest of the day in wet clothes, especially if we're going to find some walking tracks in the forest. Anyway, the next stop, we're off to uh, Cedar Beach. No, sorry, Conway Beach. <laughs> I'll get them mixed up. So we're off to Conway Beach, and we'll have a little look down there, and uh, we're going to get some mobile reception, kind of investigate where some walking tracks around here so we can go for a bit of a walk through the bush. See you at Conway. So here we are. We just stopped down here at Conway Beach. Really just wanted to come down and have a quick little look. Uh, tide's well out, as you can see. Um, and as you can also see on the horizon, I think we've almost run out of luck as far as um, the uh, rainy season and no rain uh, coming into town. So the weather always comes in off the, off the ocean pretty much. As you can see, there's some pretty big uh, rain showers out there and some decent clouds. So we might be in for a bit of rain this afternoon and uh, probably a bit of a bumpy flight out of here tomorrow. So everywhere around this part of the region is uh, sugarcane land. And uh, here we go, this is a, here's a sugarcane plantation. You'll find these everywhere, as far as the eye can see. down the end of the street, across the road. So yeah, a lot of sugar cane grown up in this part of the world. So uh, here we are at uh, the Early Beach Walk. This is a short 850 metre walk through the local rainforest. Um, it's by uh, resorts and houses and stuff, but uh, it runs along the, um, along the creek. So we're going to go for a bit of a walk and see if we can get up to the rock pool. It's about an hour or two. And uh, yeah, this will be the last uh, exercise of the day. I think we're going to go and spend the afternoon by the pool just chilling out. So uh, see some shots along the way. Follow me. Grandma walk, grade one. So it gets steeper as you go further up. First part is pretty relatively easy for you. Butterflies and birds, and there was a lizard, but I missed that. I was too busy trying to film a black and white butterfly that was drinking in the water. Only thing uh, keeping my eyes peeled for, obviously, is the odd sun baking snake. I haven't seen any up this way yet, so fingers crossed, won't see any at all. I don't think this trail is as walked as what it once used to be, but uh, yeah, hopefully 
the rock pool at the top will be full of water. And um, uh, this uh, hike up the hill will pay off. We've hit the grade three section, so it's starting to climb up a bit now, get a bit steeper. At the end, we'll have to clamber over some rocks to get up to the top. So we've uh, completed the last part of the track, which is a little bit of an up and down climb. Still relatively easy. I mean, not a ball buster. You, could, you can walk up here taking your time quite pleasantly. When you get to the end here, you treat it with this little rock pool. And if you wanted to cool off, you could sit sit in the rock pool and uh, you know splash your feet around and have a little bit of a dip. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna come down here and see where the creek the creek runs down over these boulders. It's been a landslide or two I guess in the old days. We washed down in some of the in the bigger storms. But yeah, it's a beautiful little creek now. We've got runs off hello mini. And runs off down down there. If anything can tell me what these funny little things are in the water here buzzing around, I'd be interested to know. Huh? Are they like a little insect of some sort all swarming around in the water? But yeah, if anybody knows, I'd be very interested to know. So here we are, this is our last night in Airlie Beach and tonight we've come to a restaurant that we were recommended called Fish Divine. It's a, I guess, a seafood themed restaurant, um, but it's also a rum bar and it serves 800 different rums um, that you could, well, if you wanted to try them all, I reckon that, that you would, uh, you know, I guess that you would uh, probably be pretty whizzed by the time you finished them. Anyway, uh, ordered our first drink. Um, Minnie's gone with just a, a uh, rum and pineapple juice, spiced rum and pineapple juice. And myself, I've gone with the good old trusty mojito. How can you come to a rum bar without having a mojito? So our entree is up. Um, we decided to mix it up a little bit. We've got uh, some natural oysters with uh, wakamami, I think it is, and um, uh, what, and uh, pickled ginger. And the other one is just a uh, pork bao. So we're going to give these a go and uh, see how they are. All right. So we're going to tuck into one of the bao. Give that a wee bite. And uh, we'll see how that is. So it looks like it's like pulled pork in there. Um, a bit of slaw, some pickle. Wow. It's very tasty. The, um, the slaw and the pickle really offsets the sweetness of the pork. It makes it quite a... Um, Quite a succulent mouthful. Don't know why. Mm. Yeah, that's very good. Right, I'm going to follow that up by these oysters. Now, I probably totally mispronounced the sauce that's on there, but, or this dressing. But, uh, some sort of Japanese dressing, like a mami or something like that. I'll correct myself later, but anyway, look at that, and some pickled ginger. Just on a nice natural South Australian rock oyster. So here we go. It's really good. Mm. I 
really want to dig into a few more of those. So you're going to have to let me be now while I uh, devour into my entree. Yep. So uh, for the main course, we ordered um, the bugs, as you can see here. These are native to around northern Australia. It stretches around from Moreton Bay, which is near Brisbane, all the way around through the top of Australia, you'll find these. These were once considered a pest. Um, and the fishermen used to chuck them away, but now they are a bit of a delicacy. The meat is very, very similar to like a lobster meat. Um, and it's probably a little bit sweeter than what uh, lobster meat is. For myself, I've gone with the San Francisco chowder. Now, a seafood chowder, absolutely chock full of, of fresh meat. We've got, we got mackerel, fillets, we've got, we've got calamari, we've got whole scallops, and then we've got a, a nice uh, fish fillet. So, oh, yeah. Yep. Mm. That is that is absolutely delicious. Serve in a big crusty sourdough bowl. Put the bread in. Mm. This is really good. Very flavoursome. Plenty of seafood flavour. I'll get back to you when I finish. Excellent. Wow. <laughs> so, Minnie, how are you going with your bugs? Good. Good? Yeah, it's yummy and fresh. Very sweet. So, you got five bugs on the plate. <clears throat> Served with what? Coconut rice and a bit of salad. Mm -hmm. And so far, you've only got. One empty in your bucket. So you still got four to go. I oh, look great. Beautiful. So today's our uh, last day here in um, Ely Beach. Just come out for four days, three nights. Um, we've already checked out of the hotel, but uh, we can stay here and use the uh, facilities for a few hours until we get our flight home tonight. Now our flight goes back around about, uh, I think 6.30 p.m. the flight schedule for. So uh, we're gonna hang around the hotel, have a couple of beers, a bit of lunch, and then we're gonna um, head off out to the airport around about 4.30, uh, quarter to five, to um, drop the car back and go and wait to board our flight home to Melbourne. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, trekking with Gertie special. Um, it's a bit of a longer one, obviously, because we've done a few days up here. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll be back with you soon.